School leadership. We've been talking a lot about this. It's shared leadership. It's collaborative leadership. It's working together. Parent and community ties. They believe in the school. The school reaches out to the parents in the community. The professional capacity of the staff. They know how to teach the kids that they are given in their school. They have multiple approaches to teaching and learning. They understand how to use curriculum, how to make it challenging, and how to provide students with the supports needed. They know how to do the balanced assessment. The climate of the school is positive. It's a good place to be. It's a safe place to be. It's an orderly place to be. And there's instructional guidance. There's articulated curriculum. That the, that the move from grade to grade and school to school has been spelled out. People know what they're doing and know where they're going. And it's when all five of these are together that the magic happens. They found schools that measured strong in all five of those were 10 times more likely than schools with just one or two strengths to, to um, achieve substantial gains in reading and math. And a weakness in just one of those areas undermined everything else. Just briefly, I'm just going to let you read these. Seven times, four times. Strong parent involvement. Teachers highly committed, innovative. up here and say, oh yeah, you've got to do this. But I know that things get tough. And this is where leadership comes in. And how you lead and how you respond to those things that are going on around you is going to make all the difference. Once upon a time, there was a middle school student who came home from school. And she was just in a rotten mood. She walked in the door, and her father happened to be sitting there. And she just, to use middle school terminology, pardon me, this school sucks. Today sucks. I failed my math test. My friends got mad at me. My locker would open. Uh, you know, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Your father was a very wise man. He also happened to be a chef, so he knew a little bit about cooking. And he took her into the kitchen, and he said, sit down, and got her something to drink. And he put three pots of water on the stove and brought them to a boil. And she was kind of watching him while all this was going on. And into one pot, he threw carrots. And into one pot, he threw eggs. And into one pot, he threw coffee beans. And they sat there, and they talked for about 20 minutes. And she was starting to calm down. And she was able to get a listening ear from her dad. And the, and the pots boiled nicely on the stove. And then he says, come over here. And he, and he said, look, what do you see here? And being the typical middle school student, she said, well, I see carrots, carrots and eggs and coffee. So I want you to think about this. When the carrots went into the boiling water, they were firm and solid. What do they look like now? They're mushy and soft. When the eggs went into the water, they had a firm shell, but the inside was flexible and liquid and soft. They're hard-boiled all the way through now. When the coffee went into the water, the water changed. You know, as, as school leaders, regardless of the role that you're leading from, you're going to be in hot water this next year. You're going to make decisions that not everybody agrees with. You're going to be trying to push for innovations. You're trying to make changes. So I ask you, how are you going to be? Are you going to be like the carrots? And you're starting out. It's always easy to start the school year out firm and strong. You know, at the end of the year, are you going to be mushy and soft and giving in to every sway? I've had principles like that. The last person that talked to them always got the way that that was the way things were going to go. They'd tell one teacher one thing, another teacher would go in and say, yeah, but I think if we did it this way, oh, I really like that way. Yeah, we'll do it that way. And they had no firmness about them. Are you going to be like the eggs? 
Yeah, you're firm on the outside, but you're soft and pliable on the inside. At the end of the year, you're going to be hard boiled and cynical and just say, no, no, yeah, this is the way it is. Are you going to be like the cop? And are you going to infuse who you are <coughs> and positiveness and an um, optimistic outlook into everything you do? I had a, a personal experience. Um, I'm a widow. My husband passed away about six years ago, it was six years this summer. He was diagnosed early on with Parkinson's disease and Lewy body dementia. And the last year of his life, he needed to live, live in a, a foster care home. And, and it was tough. Um, Lewy body is not quite like Alzheimer's, but, but has other characteristics. At his memorial service, so many of the people that were there spoke and they said, you know, even in these times, he was positive and optimistic. He had a faith that carried him through. He was always willing to talk to people when they came. He looked ahead. <coughs> he didn't complain. He never once said, why, why did you put me in this place? He made the decision at the time, but as, as, as time went on, what his mental capabilities weren't quite that strong. Because he kept that positive outlook, he helped me keep the positive outlook online. And as I worked with schools and, and everything, tried to instill that viewpoint, that disposition into the people around me. So it's a great time to be here, to get excited, to start thinking about you going to be creating plans this week. As you put them in, think about how are you going to, what's the outcome going to be? And my hope for you is it's going to be like a good cup of coffee or tea if you're a tea drinker instead of a coffee drinker, that you are going to infuse who you are into all situations because that's what leadership is all about. Thank you.